Hello and welcome back. Um, as promised, we're going to do a another in our series of test equipment to actually signal generator videos. And this time, in this video, we're going to feature the Sound Technologies 1000A FM alignment generator. So if uh, this is something interesting to you, stay tuned and uh, hopefully we'll have some fun aligning a receiver with this piece of test equipment. Now, the first thing we want to go over on this is, first of all, this particular piece of test equipment is only good for aligning um, FM stereo receiver tuners. Um, it does not do the AM band. It does not do shortwave. Um, it is strictly for one purpose only, and that is FM stereo and FM mono, of course. Uh, it's a very unique piece of test equipment, and it doesn't work exactly like, um, you know, the traditional signal generator and multiplex generator, although it can do that. Now, <laughs> there are two different ways that this thing can be used. Um, number one, we can use it as a standalone unit, which is what we're going to do in this video. But also, we can use it just like I use the... Uh, Sencor 165 SG165 where you can come out of one of these connectors and you can use the stereo signal generator inside this to modulate for instance my HP 8657 and uh, kind of use uses it as two different pieces of test equipment so uh, it's a pretty versatile piece of equipment it's old um, these have been around a long time they're no longer in production and although it is very convenient to use and can be very fast to align a, a tuner with it it also has its limitations uh, the first thing you'll notice is there are no digital displays or digital controls on it it's all analog um, now of course there is a gear reduced adjustment for the uh, for the oscillator and so forth but once again, it is an analog control, and so if you need very high accuracy, um, this is probably not the piece of test equipment you want to use. A lot of the, for instance, I would never use this on a synthesized receiver, um, just because you can't get the the signal without using another piece of test equipment like a uh, frequency counter or a spectrum analyzer or something. Um, you know, here is 106 megahertz on this little line, but, you know, is this 106 megahertz or is this 106 megahertz or what? You know, um, that's okay because most of the receivers from this era were all analog scale tuners, and this was more than accurate enough for that. And you're going to see just how accurate a analog piece of equipment can be. Now, this went through several... Uh, upgrades over the years. Uh, I'm not this particular one, but this model in general. And a couple of the upgrades are actually pretty nice. Uh, this one, the only upgrade that is on it, this is kind of the original model, but this does have the upgrade that I put in myself for the, uh, the lower distortion. And uh, if you really know what you're doing, you can read up on it, and there's a modification. You have to cut some tracks on the bottom of the circuit board, and you have to add some resistors and a capacitor and a couple other things. But it actually reduces the total harmonic distortion uh, by some. You know, it's still not perfect, but it's better than it was. Uh, the trade-off I've noticed is when you adjust things like the phase and sweep width and so forth, um, there's a little bit of a lag uh, before it locks in on it, but it really doesn't matter. It, it works good. Uh, this particular unit has not had a full calibration in a long time. It is working pretty well, but I have noticed that the RF level scale is completely wrong. Uh, it actually is reading, it's putting out, you know, lower, a lower microvolt range than what the scale is saying. So we're just going to kind of eyeball it, but you're, you're going to find out that that's not all that important when you're doing an alignment with this thing. It's actually, um, we can do what we need to do. Now the big claim to fame for this particular unit 
is this mo this function right here called dual sweep and the thing that's unique about that is there is a method by which we can connect this to the antenna jack of your FM tuner you can connect the output of this to your oscilloscope and this little thing that says receiver you can actually connect to the record output jack um, of your receiver the thing is we can test this unit without taking the cover off of it in other words all you need access to is your antenna jack and your record out jack of your receiver and you can connect this thing up without even taking the covers off and you can check some things out which is a pretty good thing also when you go to do the alignment you'll see that the method that they use here and it doesn't really explain a lot in the manual so I'll go through this with you um, it makes it very easy and very quick to uh, do an alignment um, so let's start by looking at how we do the connection if we're going to use this as a standalone unit and we're going to start out by using the dual sweep mode okay so the first thing you want to make sure you have is one of these matching transformers and if you have one of these this is the one the model 100 is the one that comes with this this is the one that you need with the 1000a and what it'll do is the 1000a just like any other signal generator is designed to have a 50 ohm load um, but of course your antenna jack of your stereo is 300 ohms if you use the one that uses the little twin lead wire so this is a 50 to 300 ohm matching transformer and as you can see it gives you a one-to-one -one voltage ratio so what that means is that if this dial scale is accurate <laughs> at the port here it will even though you're going into a 300 ohm load it will be the same voltage going into your uh, receiver so you need that and you come out of the RF out and you plug into this okay so there it is there's the wire and then this just connects right up to your 300 ohm input terminals of your receiver so there you go we just connect this right up into here and it goes right into the antenna jack now down here we have our record out jack and what I have is a little as they recommend a BNC to RCA adapter and you go into your 50 ohm BNC cable and you plug it into the record out which is this port right here and then that goes along here and it plugs right into where it says receiver now these next two connectors go up to your oscilloscope and we have to talk a little bit about how to set up our oscilloscope you have two outputs on this one is your horizontal output and one is your vertical output the vertical output is the actual signal that we're going to be monitoring and the horizontal output is actually going to be used as a trigger to synchronize this signal generator to the sweep in the, the oscilloscope so let's take a let's uh, move up now to our scope and kind of look at how that's going to be set up okay I hope we're focused here I can't really see very well on my <laughs> little viewfinder but so the vertical output of that signal generator is going into channel one the horizontal output is going to channel two I'm setting my sweep at about one millisecond per division and I'm setting setting my vertical deflection on this channel to one volt per if you notice I actually have channel 2 turned off and I only have channel 1 turned on and on my particular scope I can do that because I'm using channel 2 as my sync input now some oscilloscopes have an external trigger input and if that is the case if you have that type of scope you want to plug into your external trigger what I'm using is I am using channel 2 as my trigger port so you can see how it's turned on to channel 2 and I plug in there so if I turn everything on so there's the signal generator turned on and I turn on my tuner 
I get a funny looking signal like that. <laughs> now, one of the things, and again, we have to let everything warm up for a little bit to stabilize, but essentially what you're looking at is, is this noise here is going to be very difficult to look at on some of the newer digital scopes. Um, and the reason being is this noise is so fast that it tends to, on some oscilloscopes, some of the digital ones, the newer ones, it tends to get pixelated. Um, for instance, uh, on my TDS3032, it's a 300 megahertz scope and it's got a 2.5 giga sample per second sample rate. But even that scope, when you're getting really into this noise like this, it doesn't quite look so sharp like this. It actually gets kind of pixelated looking. So really, the best tool for the job for this particular kind of uh, thing is going to be an analog scope. And you don't need a 2465. This actually, I've done this test. I have an old leader LBO505, which is a 5 megahertz analog scope. 5 megahertz. And it still looks just like this. You get a perfect image. Um, so in some instances, your analog scopes can be um, a lot more, uh, could be better suited, you know, than these really expensive modern digital scopes. Not saying that the digital scope can't work and it won't work, um, but some of the lower cost ones with the lower sample rates just aren't going to get it. So that's all I'm saying. Um, all right. So let's go down and kind of look at how we set some of the knobs on this thing. All right, back to the controls here. Um, so to this meter actually shows several different things. And when we're in dual sweep mode, your sweep width is the top set of numbers up here. And this is, this is actual kilohertz. So what they actually have you do is they have you start out at, at maximum somewhere around 600 kilohertz, which is actually kind of overdriving things and at 100 microvolts. And then they have you adjust the frequency a little bit to kind of center it. And uh, then when you're done, you're going to kind of turn this down. And really where you're going to set this is with your sweep width at about 200 kilohertz. Okay, so this is a sweep generator is all this is. And what this is is kind of a different way of looking... How can I explain it? it? This would take the place of when you do your S curve. So any of you who do this sort of thing, uh, whenever you use a sweep generator with markers and you put your S curve up on, this, on the oscilloscope and then you align for your, um, for your angle, you know, for, your, for a linear angle, and then your marker, you center it at the knee point there, you know, at the center. Um, this is a similar thing. You're, you're going to use this to measure and to adjust, for instance, your discriminator and to check your uh, IF. Now, this is not exactly, uh, this is a good thing to for looking at something. I still am not comfortable using this method to actually calibrate something. So we have this set right now. We're at our 100 microvolts. We're at 200 kilohertz sweep. We're on dual sweep mode. I'm set at 106 megahertz right now. Or you really should put it at a quiet spot in the dial is what they recommend. And then when we go back up to the scope, you're going to kind of get this funny looking pattern up here. And you can see it kind of jumps around. It's really noisy with all the cables and all the stuff. And what you're really looking for is this pass band here. You actually want this thing to be flat. And if your discriminator is set properly in the center of the passband, this whole line will be relatively, it's not going to ever be perfect, but it should be relatively flat. Once that is flat, what that should do, so for instance, if I take this adjuster here and I go into my discriminator coil, you can kind of see how I can make it like an hourglass and then I can make it straight, make it kind of like bow out. 
And what we want is, see how that's kind of straight like that? And you can see it's kind of straight. If you go down here, now I didn't even look at anything. I'm hoping that I don't stick my foot in my mouth here. <laughs> if everything's correct, if you look at the meter here, you can see that the tuning meter should be dead centered. And that's kind of the correlation between this. So you could see we visually aligned the discriminator to be centered. And of course the meter tracks with that. So that's pretty much what this is all about. Again, th this whole thing is not, not a method that I would use or that I do use. It's kind of, to me, it's a little bit awkward and you really have to learn the interaction between these analog controls and what happens on your oscilloscope uh, in order to really make this be beneficial. Um, I can see it as a valuable tool for just doing a spot check without taking a receiver apart. Because you know if you get that pass band and it's kind of flat like that and nice, you know your discriminator and your IF is at least relatively calibrated. So now let's look at some of the more normal test uh, alignments you can do with this generator. Okay, so here's a little more traditional way of using the ST1000A to align a receiver. So this way is much simpler and I like it much better and this is uh, the way I do it. So the same thing holds true. You come out of your RF port, you go into your matching pad and you go into your 300 ohm uh, antenna input. That's, that's normal. You come out of the record jack and this time instead of going into the ST1000 we go just straight into our oscilloscope and we just we're going to look directly at our uh, oscilloscope waveform. Now we can also in addition to putting that in there we can also um, put a VTVM in there and we can actually look at the deflection. So let's do that. Okay, I now have the receiver set to mono. I'm still tuned into a frequency. Right now I'm on 106 uh, megahertz. Um, you can really, a, good, a better thing to do is go to the center of the dial scale, like around 98 megahertz. I'm at 106 right now. It's not a big deal for, for just test purposes. Uh, in our area, all of the stations around 98 megahertz, that's, there's a lot of stations. It's pretty hot around there. So it really, you can get interference. So, you know, you might just get a dead spot on the dial and dial it in, center everything up. And what we're going to look for now is maximum deflection on our meter. And we're going to look for maximum amplitude on our oscilloscope at the same time. So... I have 100% deviation. So now, when you go to a mono modulation, and you can see left mono, so we're on mono, so mono, mono, <laughs> the oscillator level, this is actually the knob that adjusts your um, FM deviation. So we set our deviation to 100%. Okay, that's where we're at. And if I turn this up, you can hear we have a signal. We're basically tuned into it. And remember, we haven't even opened a service manual for this receiver yet. Uh, this meter right here is set to AC volts, and I have it tied into the record jacks, just like uh, just like the oscilloscope. So now the scope and the meter are both on the tape record jack. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop our RF level until we get some noise. Now this is just my way of doing things. Um, <laughs> everybody has their own little way of doing this but I'm going to turn this knob which is basically the the RF signal level so how much amplitude comes out of here. Watch my oscilloscope as I do that. Okay right now we're set 10 microvolts. Now I'm going to go down until I start seeing some fuzz. Okay. And there it is. See the static? We want that static in there. Okay, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. 
So we want to see that static. And it's very important that the static is symmetrical at the top and the bottom. So watch what happens when I tune off frequency with mine. I'm going to turn the tuning dial on the receiver. See what happens? All of the static goes on one side and this side stays clear. Watch when I tune to the other side of the band. See what happens? Now this side goes down. So the idea is we know that we're tuned right on frequency with our signal generator when we have an equal amount of static on both sides. You see that? Now that's how I know I'm centered. Now as soon as we know that we're centered on frequency, okay, this is where we can now set our discriminator and use the, set it with the, uh, so that the meter is centered. So let's go and I'll get set up for that. All right, on many of these receivers, not just Pioneer, but, you know, whether it's Sansui, Marantz, all of the, th all of the tuners, you know, Radio Shack, whatever, almost all of the receivers from this era, if you look, you have these smaller looking transformers here, but there's always a big silver one like this, kind of stands out. And it's always on the tuner board, and it's always somewhere not too far from the tuning gang. Okay, kind of, so you have your IFs and all that over here, but then, then you have this over here. This one's going to be your discriminator coil, and your discriminator coil has two different slugs in it, okay? The discriminator is actually the part of the circuit that strips the audio from the RF signal, okay? So that's what detects the signal. Um, there are different types. There is a ratio detector. Um, uh, there's a Sealy detector, there's the uh, quadrature detector. Most of them are some form of a ratio detector. And that's what this one is right here. So really what we're going to do is there's two slugs in here, an upper one and a lower one. One of them is always going to adjust your meter if you have a centering meter for your tuning centering. The other one is you're going to set for minimum distortion. So the first thing we want to do is set our centering meter. Now, I have a feeling it's pretty darn close on this one, but uh, we're just going to go in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera at an angle where you can see the meter, and you, can, you won't see this because this heat sink will be in the way, but you'll see my adjuster in there, and you'll see w what effect it has. Okay, here we are. I'm going to try to see the meter here <laughs> while we adjust it. See how it's not quite centered? But we still have the uh, symmetrical static on our signal and what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and adjust it until it's the meter is nice and center reading on the middle okay you see so there you go that part's done okay for this next test the first thing we want to do is let me move you over to the scope and what we want to do is we want to get a nice solid sound a sine wave with no static on it at all so we're going to increase our RF level until it flattens right out so we're going to go somewhere between about 10 10 to 20 microvolts I'm going to go 30 microvolts just for good measure and then I have that wire coming down to a T and then the T goes down to the record jack but this T also connects to our distortion meter and now we're going to adjust the upper slug in this particular case of that same discriminator coil for a minimum distortion and I can tell you right now it looks adjusted it looks like if we move it much it's just going to get worse instead of better because this is about all you can expect out of these kinds of tuners and with this type of test equipment driving it so uh, let me go through here. That's definitely going the wrong way. So let's come back down. And you can see it's so jumpy. Because it's not a really strong signal for this thing. 
And this is it. It's just kind of sweeping back and forth down around 2.2.1% and then up again. There we go. And you can see it kind of going down. And that's about it. That's all you can do. And remember, this is the total system distortion. So this is not only just your tuner. This is all the noise that's in the cables. This is all of the noise that's in your preamplifier, in the preamp circuit of the receipt to tuner board itself, the tone control, everything. So uh, you're going to see some of that with all this, especially at such a low signal level. But the idea is to minimize the signal as low as possible. And that's it. Your discriminator is adjusted. If we look up here, we got a nice clear sine wave. All right, so our discriminator is adjusted. Okay, I'm now way down to two microvolts um, setting on the meter on the uh, ST1000A. So if I move you down here, you can kind of see I'm way down to about two microvolts. And and again, I'm, it's not the most accurate calibration, but it's pretty pretty close. Um, and you can see I have my VTVM set up, and it's just reading the signal. And now, just to kind of show you how you set your IF, um, we got everything centered, which is good. Now we're just going to peak our IFs up a little bit. And you can see, as I adjust it, it drops down. And if I go the other way, it goes up. And then it drops back down again as I go through the peak. So right about there is our peak. And then there's another one here. Now this you're going to need to look in the schematics uh, to find out where your IF adjustments are. And you can see, once again, we peak it out. And we haven't changed anything else on the signal yet. We're still using mono. We're still using, uh, you know, the... the uh, 100% deviation, the whole nine yards, and we're just peaking it. And you can see once again, and we center everything up. And that's it. It's that simple. So, again, this tuner is pretty much lined up. And there you go. Now it's real jumpy because we're only putting two microvolts of, of signal into it. And you can hear it doesn't sound too bad. I mean for, you know, for something of that low of an amplitude, that's pretty, pretty good. So that's it. We just aligned the FM. Now the next part is going to be the multiplex. And once again with the ST1000A, you can do the entire alignment just with the ST1000A, you don't need any other signal generator. Okay, we still haven't changed anything from doing our uh, discriminator and our IF. Um, and we're ready to go and do our stereo multiplex. So to do that, we're going to go to stereo. We're going to go to left and right, left plus right. Okay, L plus R. We are going to go in and we are going to hit test for our pilot signal and we're going to set our pilot signal right around there let's wait a second I'm looking at a crooked here we go so I'm setting my pilot signal at about three peak volts okay and you hold this test button in, and then your peak volts is what the pilot is reading the pilot voltage here. And your pilot is your 19 kilohertz. Again, this is kind of an advanced video. <laughs> I'm assuming some of the, anybody who's interested in this already kind of knows how to do an alignment for the most part. Um, so we're set at 3 volts. Then we have to go back to our oscillator level and drop it back down to our 100% deviation. And remember, whenever you go to a multiplex signal, it attenuates the signal a lot. So we're going to have to go up 
and I'm going to go to about 100 microvolts just for starters and then I'm going to connect uh, both channels to the two channels of the oscilloscope. So once again we hold the pilot level in and you can see it's set at the 3 volts or the 80 percent roughly and if I go down and up that's what I'm talking about. So let's leave it right at that 3 there and if we go over and look at our stereo indicator light let's see if you can zoom in on it <laughs> if I can get the camera lined up and you see the light there now watch what happens when I turn the pilot level down it pops off and you can see when we get up here it comes on okay so we have a nice strong signal there okay okay we have our right and left channels from our record output jacks and if I go to right channel you can see the the right channel only comes on if I go to left channel of course I'm not syncing on that channel but uh, and you can see there's your left channel so what we want to do now is we go to one channel which is for instance left channel and we adjust that pot so watch what happens as I adjust the pot you can see we're suppressing this channel that's the, our suppressed channel right now and the idea is to make that line as flat as possible now you see what happens when I turn that pot it actually turns it back on I go the other way and see so the idea is to get it as flat as possible and there you go when I go to the other channel I just check and make sure that it is also relatively flat that's what gives you your stereo separation the more separate the more flat this is and the more complete this is the more stereo separation you have so the idea is you want a perfectly flat line here no signal and all signal on this side so we go back to left plus right and left minus right and you can see that throws them out of phase so there's left plus right and our stereo is set that's really all there is um, <laughs> that's about it so this is just a quick little demonstration because I had so many people asking to show them uh, how this thing works because they might be interested in purchasing one um, certainly this was not a <laughs> college level class on using a sound technology 1000a but it at least give you a, a brief idea of how it works that's this is pretty much all this piece of test equipment does that's it you can check it's for FM stereo and FM receivers only nothing else um, it will not do AM radio it will not do shortwave nothing like that um, and again I can come out of this composite jack and I can use this just in the same manner that I use my SG-165 in conjunction with my HP and if I did that I certainly would get a lot more accurate alignment uh, than with this analog unit so uh, there you have it that's how to use this now in all actuality I probably will use my HP and I'll go back through this alignment uh, to make sure everything's good but I'm pretty sure it'll be right spot on now uh, really it didn't need a whole lot of alignment to begin with everything was pretty close so there you go so I'll just we'll go and do a tuning sweep here real quick just so you could see that it all worked and uh, then we're gonna call this video a wrap check out Chapino restaurant and cigar bar on Facebook Financing for 36 months. Either way, News 4. I'm Mike Clark. And I'm Janelle Hall. Has sweet love, but I lost She got me. Thank you for putting your buddies' lives ahead of your own. Go to our website at foreverpittsburgh.com. Oh. A lot. It's actually funny. There's even physicians. be the Show is 
movies and series. Plus, you can stream it. Musicians and recording technicians are... I got the IRAs, the 401ks, the MLR. With customized physical, occupational, and speech therapy programs, experience... On the 2019 Camry L... What these instruments sound like in conference April 6th. Go to moodyconferences.com. Consequences and they destroy a lot. And even that would feel like we're being. Well, there you go. Um, picked up a lot of stations in this basement. <laughs> so, uh, again, that's how you do an alignment with a, a uh, ST1000A. Now, of course, I really wasn't getting too much into how to align a uh, SX780 Pioneer receiver specifically, just showing you some of the techniques that you can do with that sound technology uh, thing. Go through a lot of my old videos. I, ha I have tons of ones where I do tuner alignment for all different types with all different equipment and things. So. Uh, I hope this was useful to some of you who have one of these or who might be thinking of getting one and kind of not sure how they work or what they're used for. That's really what I was trying to give a demo of and kind of compare it to how you would align something with another piece of test equipment. So again, thank you all and there's so much more coming here. I got a lot of things to do on the bench here. So I wish you all peace, joy, happiness and good health in your lives as always. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.